Hi, welcome to Richie's How To's Part 18. Today we're going to look at the subject, How to Pray in the Spirit. Over the last few weeks, as we've been looking at the How To's, we've been covering the subject of prayer in all its forms and facets. Today we're going to look at this great subject, How to Pray in the Spirit. So let's look at the Word of God together. It's in Jude 20. But ye beloved, building yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. And this subject of praying in the Spirit is a really a big subject amongst the charismatic and Pentecostal believers. But really praying in the Spirit is for every believer, no matter what your denomination. Because praying in the Spirit is not just about praying in tongues. Praying in the Spirit is in regards to our English prayers as well as our tongue speaking prayers. And so whether you speak in tongues or don't speak in tongues, the reality is you are a believer who has the opportunity to pray in the Spirit, English and tongues. Praise the Lord. We'll cover tongues in a few moments time, but let's look at the fact that prayer as a whole, as we pray even in English, we are to pray in the Spirit. We've captured this term praying in the Holy Ghost as praying in tongues alone, but that is not the case. That's not what Jude is talking about. And it's in regards to every type of prayer and facet of prayer we pray. Every prayer is to be a prayer in the Spirit, folks. And so that's important because it opens up all types of prayer to be in the Spirit to all believers, tongue speaking or non-tongue speaking. So let's look at this a little bit more closely together. What does the word in the Spirit first mean? Before we know how to do it, we've got to look at what it means to pray in the Spirit. This word in means this, in, by, with. In, by, with. It also means this, in relation to rest. A fixed position of rest. Hallelujah. And so in, by, with. Let's just look at that for a few moments. To pray in the Spirit means we're praying in the Spirit because we're fixed position. It's a position of the believer. And if you're a believer, you have been fixed in a position of being in the Holy Spirit. It means by. So that's a, that means you become an instrument of the Holy Spirit. He resides in you, doesn't he? And so the, the Apostle Paul was very clear about this, that as believers, the Holy Spirit has made his home in us. We become the temples of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says very clearly that we're not in the flesh, we're actually in the Spirit. And so the Holy Spirit resides in us, doesn't it? And so when we pray in the Spirit, it's denoting our fixed position in him and that position is one of rest so as we pray from a position of restfulness that we're not going to be what does the Bible says be anxious for nothing lift your requests up to God so we're in a place of rest in Christ we're a place of rest in the spirit we're not in anguish trying to get God trying to beg God to almost hear us and, and going through seven steps and ten steps to get God to hear us. No, we're in a place of rest in Christ. We're in a place where we're rested in what the Spirit of God has done in our lives when we was born again. And so we're not in the flesh, we're in the Spirit. And so that, that's great because it's in, by, with as well. And so the Holy Spirit is with us. Jesus says that he will be with us. And the Holy Spirit is with us, folks. So he never leaves us. He never forsakes us. The Holy Spirit is with us, even in these times of prayer. So to pray in the Spirit means we pray from a position of rest. It's a fixed position, meaning that 
we are in a place where we're not on a roller coaster ride when it comes to our prayers. What do I mean by that? To pray in the Spirit means you believe that the Holy Spirit resides in you and is influencing your prayers. You're not in a situation where you say, I'm in the Spirit, out of the Spirit, in the anointing, out of the anointing. You, you're not in that position when it comes to prayer. Because if you have that kind of mentality, you will not be able to pray confidently. You will not be able to pray using faith and having faith. You will have a roller coaster ride by your emotions, by your feelings. I don't feel good today, so I'm out of the spirit, so my prayers won't get answered. That is not the case, folks. As believers, we are in the spirit, we pray by the spirit, and we are with the spirit, and the spirit is with us. This is a positional term, a fixed position, and so it's not a roller coaster ride. We're not heard one day and then not the other. By God, our Heavenly Father, He hears us every day when we pray. And so that's something to pray in the Spirit. We must believe and then we must pray from that place of rest, that place of fixedness, that place of unity that we understand that we are also praying with the Spirit. This is unity, this is partnership, folks. But the Holy Spirit, he's praying with us because we are united in the Spirit. That he is involved in our prayer life. He is involved in the very prayers that we pray. The scriptures say that the Holy Spirit is also the spirit of supplication. And so the Holy Spirit knows how to pray, even when we don't. Romans 8 declares this, that we don't always know how to pray as we should do, but the Holy Spirit knows how to pray. And so the Holy Spirit is in us, guiding us, influencing us, putting desires in our hearts to pray, putting thoughts in our minds to pray, guiding us with the scriptures, prompting our new heart that God has given us in areas of prayer. Hallelujah. But we pray from this fixed uh, position in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. And so to pray in the Spirit is so important rather than praying according to the flesh. And I say according to the flesh because we're not in the flesh. We're according to the old patterns of the flesh where we're almost trying to beg God. Even the world can sometimes in their religious ways stand there begging God, not feeling worthy to be answered. That's not praying in the spirit. Uh, not praying in the spirit is a, a place where you're worried that you don't have peace with God, where you're worried that your sins are not forgiven or you, you need to do something to get God to be pleased with you. All those things are praying according to the flesh. When we pray according to the Spirit, we're in that place of rest. We are praying in, by, with. We're pr pr praying from a position of in Christ Jesus. So when I approach in the Spirit, it means on this, I approach my Heavenly Father knowing I'm forgiven knowing that he's put faith in me, knowing that the anointing is in me, knowing that the Father hears me so I can come confidently, knowing that I'm justified and made righteous by Jesus Christ. Everything the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ accomplished for me as a believer, when I come with that mindset, when I come with that heart, when I come with that confidence, I'm praying in the Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is the one that leads us into all truth concerning Jesus Christ and what he has done for us. So praying from that position of in Christ is praying in the Spirit. Hallelujah. And we are praying together because the Holy Spirit works with what Christ has done. Praise the Lord. So it is important to pray in, by, with the Spirit. Hallelujah. Romans 8, as I've already mentioned, says in verse 26, Likewise, the Spirit also in helps our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And so the Holy Spirit is here 
actively involved in our prayer life, even when we can't say the things the way we need to, even when we don't fully understand everything that's going on, the Holy Spirit is always working as the great intercessor in us and through us. Hallelujah. So I just want to encourage you today to stop your religious steps of trying to go through religious postures, religious means to be heard. You are heard. You've just got to accept it and believe it. And that's really a good how-to for you. Accept it and believe it. Hallelujah. Rest in his ability to influence your press. Hallelujah. And that's so important. And many times I ask the Holy Spirit when I'm in prayer, and I'm going to pray, especially if it's a specific prayer request, I always ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, influence my prayers. Holy Spirit, pray through me. Holy Spirit, put the right thoughts, the right guidance to my prayers. Lead me in those prayers. Hallelujah. And as I pray, as I step out and pray, believing that the Holy Spirit is in me, I know that he will guide my prayers. Hallelujah. Also, in praying in the Spirit, the Holy Spirit will always guide us to pray, Abba, Father, Father, Daddy, Daddy. And, and, and this is so important because when you pray in the Spirit, it means that we are praying, Daddy, Daddy. That's relationship with the Father, unity with the Father. Hallelujah. We invite His wisdom and His influence to guide us in our prayers. Hallelujah. We pray from a restful position that we're not worrying about what God's thinking about us all the time when it comes to prayer. No, to pray in the Spirit is confidence, recognizing what Christ has done for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when you pray in the Spirit, always recognize and and in your heart, you will be prompted, you will be led. And learn to recognize those promptings. It's so important because the Holy Spirit is directly uh, speaking, directly guiding, directly influencing within your new heart in Christ. And so you've got to learn to recognize those promptings in your heart when you begin to pray and he will take you down certain avenues of prayer and you need to go with those promptings hallelujah and as i've said before already and i'll stress it again pray from an in christ perspective so important but let's look at the the other facet of praying in the spirit now praying in tongues hallelujah great subject i pray in tongues a lot it's an important thing to do as believers. 1 Corinthians 14, 15. What is it then? I will pray with, my, with the Spirit. I will pray with my understanding also. I will sing with the Spirit. I will sing with my understanding also. And 1 Corinthians 14 is all about uh, the gifts of the Holy Spirit and how they are to be administered. And Paul is kind of bringing a distinction between praying praying in tongues and speaking in tongues privately and also bringing in distinction how they are to be operated within the local church in order with interpretation but paul said i speak in tongues more than you all but when i get to church i want to either interpret or i want to prophesy or i want to speak with my understanding but when i'm in private I, i'm singing and I'm, I'm praying in tongues more than all of you. How, that's a big statement to make. And so he really understood the power uh, that was in praying in tongues as well. And the Holy Spirit also motivating that gift of tongues in prayer with him. But he says, I speak mysteries. And so we're not, when we pray in tongues, we're not, we're not understanding what we're saying. But it does bring edification. It does bring edification. And that word edification is a promotion of Christian growth. It's a provoke promotion of Christian confidence. That's an amazing, it builds you up. It constructs you 
in the promotion of Christian growth. And, and that's, what, that's what's happening when we're praying in tongues. And I encourage all of you to let the Holy Spirit also guide you as you pray in tongues. We don't want to pray in tongues from memory. We don't want to pray in tongues, uh, you know, and not develop tongues. To pray in the Spirit is also allowing the influence of the Holy Spirit, even in our prayers in tongues as well as English. So when we're praying in, in English, we're praying in the Spirit. And, in, and in, uh, in Christ's perspective, with his influence, with the Holy Spirit's guidance, but also when we pray in tongues, it's fresh it's vi has vitality connected to it has the life of God when we pray in tongues we're also under the influence of the Holy Spirit in our life hallelujah and that's so important and I encourage you also to pray in tongues because the Bible says it brings edification Paul's very clear about that and he, Paul is clear that he had a regular life of praying in tongues and speaking in tongues more than all the Corinthian church did. And, and when it comes to pride, he was constantly a person who would pray in, in English, but he'd also pray in tongues. That's so important. And the word, again, I'll just make clearer to you, for edification is to promote Christian growth in virtue, wisdom, and we all need that, to grow in wisdom, to give one strength, and courage and so what happens is when we allow the holy spirit to uh, influence and guide and pray in tongues as we begin to pray in tongues as we allow the holy spirit to, to administrate the gift of tongues and praying in tongues for us as we come under the influence of the spirit we will get full of courage and full of boldness because that's what tongues does it creates that boldness and courage in the faith and in growth in Christ Jesus and so some uh, you know sometimes I feel when I pray in tongues for any amount of time sometimes I can feel very courageous and very uh, much full of boldness in my Christian life especially when I go to do something very specific that I might be nervous about I pray in tongues and I'm allowing the Holy Spirit to also have an influence over my tongue speaking life as a Christian hallelujah so that, that that's so important hallelujah so what do we see here some how to's here in even speaking in tongues it says I will pray with the Spirit I will pray with my understanding and so it, Paul says very clearly I will that's an act of the will folks We've got to get past our feelings. We've got to get past whether we're down or up, whether we think we're anointing today or not anointed today. We've got to get past whether we feel joyous today or not joyous today. When it comes to a life of praying in the Spirit and with the Spirit and by the Spirit, it's a life that, in spite of its feelings, begins to pray. He says, I will. That's an act of the will, folks. And so praying in the Spirit... Uh, in English and in tongues is an act of the will begin to pray and I'm encouraging you begin to pray you might say well I'm rubbish in prayer begin to pray I don't know what to say begin to pray I don't know how to put the words begin to pray hallelujah that's what it means I will pray and that's an act of the will praise the Lord hallelujah so as I go through this, whether you pray in tongues or English, both should be in the Spirit and are in the Spirit under His influence as a born-again believer. Listen to the promptings of the Holy Spirit. Begin to decide to pray. Be a regular, also, tongue speaker. Begin to develop that in your prayer closet or your prayer time with the Lord. But also mix it with English. Paul says, I pray with my spirit. I pray with my understanding. Learn to mix these things together. Don't see one higher than the other. See them as both in the spirit and under the Holy Spirit's guidance. Hallelujah. So let's just conclude today's how to. Recognize you're in the spirit. Recognize your position in Christ Jesus. Pray, Father. Invite the guidance of the Holy Spirit and let your thoughts, your desires 
be prompted as you pray by the Holy Spirit who resides in you. So until next time on Richard's How Tos, God bless.